erstmal von mir guten Morgen. Und äh, ich wurde darum gebeten, den Vortrag in Englisch zu halten, also das kurz vorweg. Und äh, werde jetzt gleich auch dann auch so starten. Genau, ich glaube, es klappt soweit alles. Ja, alles klar. Also kurz zu meiner Person nochmal, also Dr. Kai Ludwigs. Ich ähm, habe selbst in, in uh, I was studying, and so my name is Dr. Kai Ludwigs. I studied psychology in Düsseldorf here and um, I studied economy at the Distance University in Hagen and in 2014 I founded the Happiness Research Organization which is an independent research institute based here in Düsseldorf, Germany uh, focused on app-based research and with a special focus on topics such as subjective well-being, quality of life and happiness and just on a personal level, so I'm married to an American wife, uh, my daughter is one year old now and so I live here also in Düsseldorf, Germany with my family. So before we start, so I will just start in a bit of a different way than usually in, in, my, in my presentations with a song that um, friends of us like just showed us on Hawaii on our uh, family vacation this year and so, so it's from the Dirty Heads called Vacation and I would like you to listen very carefully for the first 40 seconds to the lyrics themselves. So first of all, I thought that this is a good song to listen to in the morning, but on the other side, they just uh, asked me to think about if that could be something fitting, like just for presentations of mine. And so when I was asked to have a presentation in the end for the topic of intention, so I thought that could be a good intro. And so I would like us to really look at the lyrics, so one, the main lyrics, and it's AAA, I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. AAA, I'm on vacation. If you don't like your life, then you should go and change it. And I thought that's really, really fitting for the topic of intention because it's that you should love your occupation, you should, do, you should in the end search for an occupation intentionally that you really like, that you can really love, to in the end be happy. And so it's about the intentional pursuit of happiness. And so I thought that's, that's a good intro in the end, but I will go into more topic now. So because like Lisa was talking about this um, in the introduction, so it's that happiness in the end is a main goal now. So and it's when you really think about it, you always need to search for something that's really your goal, like your end goal. And so the good thing why this is I think today is such a popular topic, especially in like richer countries and more developed countries is the OECD. Because the OECD changed like in the new century, their topic more to better policies for better lives. Before the OECD just supported the rich nations to try to figure out how to grow their gross domestic product to make their economy better. Then they realized, okay, that can't be everything, right? So like just to make people richer and to increase their income. So then they realized that it's really about better policies for better lives to make people really happier. So we phrased it a bit simpler and said the goal is to increase gross national happiness instead of just gross domestic product. And so in that sense is that we put it into a happiness light model, so which is rather simple. So it's in the end that you can just usually like just most people, for example, in Germany or in other developed nations are like in the higher area of the yellow zone. So kind of in the middle, they're okay, happy with their life, okay, productive, quite healthy, but so kind of like something is always missing. So, but what we do is we focus usually always on more going from the yellow zone to the, and to, to make sure that we are not going from the yellow to the red zone. And instead just to focus that we are going um, and to kind of like make sure that we are keeping to be in the yellow zone instead of trying to figure out how to come into the green zone. To really know, okay, how can we do that extra step and really think about how to intentionally become happier. And so this is in the end something that's in 2005 already an American researcher, Sonia Lyubomirsky, published. So she just talked about, um, uh, she just published a paper trying to define in the end the aspects of individual happiness to explain how much which aspect really defines in the end for somebody's happiness. And she 
um, showed that 50% is defined by our genes, by our personality, right? Like you know that some people are a bit like unhappier, always a bit more depressed, and some people seem to be like always in a good mood. So that definitely explains a lot. And 10% also explains like your family background, your nationality, where you're born, and so on and so on. But it is that 40% is defined by intentional activities. And that's really how she phrases this, this is the actual term. It's about intentional activities and not just activities, what you do. So in that sense, it's like, let's keep it positive. So about half of our happiness, we can define ourselves. So that is a lot, right? So like that you can work on and so that led me to a pretty simple definition of happiness in the end. So to say that it's about higher subjective well-being equals to to spend your time well. So you can really focus on your intentional activities and try to optimize, we call it your happiness time use. So meaning what you really do with your time and making sure that most of your time over your whole life you use your time in a happy way. So of course there will be times where you need to study for something, you need to work extra hard, and that's not always fun, for example, you also may be sick at some point, but it is to really make sure that in your int intentional choices that you make sure that most of your time is spent pretty happy. But the question is like how can we approach this? Like what is the approach to really try to become as happy as possible to come into that green zone or to stay in that green zone? And so the first main thing that you should realize is that happiness differs, of course, from person to person. That's what most academic papers, for example, also focus on. But it's really important to figure out like, just, and realize that it also differs a lot from moment to moment. And I think we all know that. Like, we have days where you wake up in the morning and you think, like, okay, today is a great day. But you also have days where you wake up and think, like, Phew, today will be quite tough just to have a good day. And even with, within a day, it switches a lot how you feel, right? So in that sense, it's important to really understand these changes from moment to moment. So when we want to optimize the happiness time use, we first need to be aware of what makes us happy and what does not. Because like otherwise, you kind of like never have a clue, right? So you're just like spending your time, but you never really spend it intentionally. And so that's where, why in 2012, um, my best friend and I, my best friend is Stefan Erdmann, a computer scientist, um, we developed the Happiness Analyzer, which was just an academic app to measure subjective well-being or happiness. And so just in more detail to really understand the changes from moment to moment, not just from person to person. And then a year after, in 2013, we ran an experiment uh, with students here from the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf to see if by paying more attention to their subjective well-being and their happiness time use, these people really become happier or not. So the first thing was that people just had to answer a questionnaire based on the OECD guidelines to me for measuring subjective well-being. It's just like general questions about how satisfied you are with certain topics in general with your life and so on. But then it's that this app just notified people four times a day between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. to answer quickly how you feel right now, what you're doing and answering options, where you are, and who is with you. So this takes like about 30 seconds, it's pretty quick. So you just click on it so, and then you just give in this moment itself like, your feedback and you're then able to even make a note, make a picture and so on. And you get then a graphical analysis like showing how happy you are at certain locations, with certain persons or doing certain activities. And then the third option is that you have to do a diary, a diary based on the method uh, from Nobel Prize laureate Daniel Kahneman where you're just doing, uh, you just have to define an episode, for example, from midnight to 6 a.m., you have to say, like, what did you do in this time, where were you, and who was with you. And so you do this in the end for all the episodes of your day, at the end of a day or on the next morning, and then you define and try to think about ha how happy you felt during these episodes. So then you know your happiness time use. So you know what you did, and you know how you felt during these activities, and also this information is then displayed in a graphical way that you also can raise your awareness in the end about what makes you happy and what does not. So this was in the end what we did and we tried to see if that has an effect on people's happiness and we clearly were able to publish that and after replicating this, this a couple times to, to show that there is an effect of about half a point which is a lot in the end on, uh, on a happiness scale um, after people 
just did a questionnaire, then they used this app for two weeks, then they're half a point happier in different ratings, and it even stays two weeks after the same way. We don't know from this study if it's like half a year after the same thing, because then like they would really need to change their time use and need to change like their, their behavior uh, probably. But we see that just by paying more attention towards your subjective well-being or your happiness, this can lead to more awareness and in this way to higher happiness. So the one thing like what you see is like it's on the one hand like the, a mean to try to figure out what you really need to become happier, but on the other side it's a recipe in itself to also increase your happiness to just like in case like just use an app like that, but on the other side you can also just make sure that you talk with your partner about how happy you feel and ask this question to yourself on a more frequent basis if you are really happy in this moment or if you are not. So in this was the basis in the end in 2013, end of 2013 to 2014 to um, start the Happiness Research Organization as an independent research institute and I will just show you a video here as well to just, um, that explains what we do. What is happiness? Happiness is manifold. Happiness is unsteady. Happiness is subjective. We make happiness measurable. In our research projects, we closely investigate people's everyday life and gain insight into their individual sense of happiness. Drawing upon our empirical database and an international network of scientists and institutions, we want to find out what makes up a happy person. We pursue a common goal, increasing happiness and well-being of every individual improving quality of life in our society. Happiness Research Organization. Focus on happiness. The main thing what this video should show is that we are just evaluating. So we are not doing trainings or interventions. So we kind of do the nerdy job. So we try to figure out like that we set a database that's people, decision makers can be in the situation that they have a good information databases to make the right decisions to increase people's happiness. So that's in the end the, the job that we see in our work and um, so we do this in the end in different fields. So in the end in four fields. So the one field is just app research, so where we, we are just building research apps to help researchers to, to also build this better, better database for their studies and then it's three different applied fields. So the one applied field are app-based employee surveys to in the end help corporate managers to try to figure out how to make their employees happier. Then it's about app-based citizen surveys called happiness census where we in the end help to set a database for mayors, urban planners to try to figure out what could increase uh, the citizens' happiness. And then it's happiness check, which are app-based customer surveys. And so now to kind of go from like more abstract topics now to really applied, uh, applied examples, I will just talk about these three applied fields and um, just explain them very shortly. So we will start with happiness monitoring and also here I will just show you a video that explains this approach. Happiness Monitoring is an app-based employee survey tool. It's your anonymous voice that allows you to give feedback about how you feel and what could be even better in your company. With this, the management can make decisions based off the employee's opinions. You can participate with the Happiness Monitoring app. In the beginning, you will answer a five-minute survey. After you've finished the survey, you are able to see your own results and the anonymized results of your colleagues. Additionally, you can give free feedback anytime, which is then anonymized and clustered by the Happiness Research Organization. The anonymized feedback is then displayed within 24 hours in a live dashboard and afterwards commented on by management. In the long term, you can regularly participate in short questionnaires about recent topics to further support the management. With this, you help your company, your colleagues, and yourself. Are you going to participate? 
So this video should show kind of like the general method. So it's here that the employees give feedback. They can also ask questions to the management, but the management also surveys them. And so in that way, you just set up a better database so that the management knows what to do to make their employees happier. And so kind of the same approach is, in, um, is also used for the citizen surveys where I will just show a video from Wuppertal, so not, not too far from here, where we set up a first panel um, of citizens giving feedback about their happiness in the city. We all want to be happy, but to be happy, we need the right conditions. Information about how happy we are and how to improve quality of life in Wuppertal are rarely available. Because of this, it is difficult to decide how to improve quality of life in Wuppertal. Happy Wuppertal is an app that helps to solve this challenge. After downloading the app from the App Store, you will answer a questionnaire about your subjective well-being and your community well-being. If you are one of the first 1,000 participants, you will be rewarded with 5 euros donation budget that you can use to fund a non-profit project in Wuppertal. Every three months, the app reminds you to do the questionnaire again to win more donation budget. Additionally, you can always give feedback on how quality of life can be improved in Wuppertal. Either you write a note in the app, or you take a picture. Your information and that of all others will be analyzed anonymously. Every six months, the results will be published online. Additionally, all results will be presented and discussed at a public event to decide the next steps for a better life in Wuppertal. If you want to help to improve quality of life here in Wuppertal, you should participate. Happy Wuppertal! Happy in Wuppertal. Happy in life. This is in the end, as you saw, I think a similar approach. So here, like just to help in the end, like the mayor, um, planners and so on, just to, um, to know in the end what would be to do to, to try to increase the citizen's happiness. And then the third field I was talking about before is the happiness check. So there it's about app-based customer surveys. So it's not as standardized as like the monitoring or the, or the census. So because here it's about to really figure out how to really make your clients happy and not just to satisfy your clients in an okay way. So and this is like where we need to really understand the product, need to understand the service and try to really prepare and customize in the end the questions need to try to make sure what we really want to measure, with, the, with, with which tools we want to measure that, how to analyze it, and then to define how to report it to the clients as well as to the management. So, but here again, it's also about raising awareness so that management can make sure how to intentionally make their uh, clients more happy and really to make them happy instead of just to give them an okay service so that they are satisfied. So that's kind of the topics here. And so I would like to end again with that song. So just to hopefully make sure that it sticks a bit in your, in your head so that you hopefully just think about what to do that you can really change your, change your activities intentionally. And so like one of your biggest activities is probably your occupation. So like maybe start there and try to figure out if you really love your occupation or if not, like just go and change it and try to try to make sure what you can change about it so that you maybe in the end can say that you always feel like you're on vacation because you love your occupation. So I'm looking forward to questions and thank you for your attention. <laughs>